Hi guys, welcome back to Cloud Tech. In this video, I'm going to discuss the interview questions which were asked into one of the interview conducted by TCS. And I'm going to solve the coding problems which were asked into the interview. And apart from this, there was one question which was asked into the interview, which I will discuss at the end of this video. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. That will not take more than two seconds for you, but it will motivate me to create more videos like this. Okay, let me explain you about the candidate. So candidate had around four years of experience working as a Java developer. And apart from Java, he was having knowledge about Spring Boot and REST APIs. Okay, and uh, when he solved these two coding problem statements and uh, answered the questions which were asked related to Java, Spring Boot or microservices, he was uh, selected and he was offered a CTC of 15.5 uh, LPA. That is 15 lakh 15,000 per annum. Okay, so this was about the uh, candidate. Now uh, let's start and uh, discuss the questions which were asked into the interview. So the first question he was asked is how to implement caching in Spring Boot. So you guys uh, should have idea about what is mean by caching. So caching is basically used to avoid frequent calls to uh, your external resources like database. Let us consider you are trying to retrieve some data from the database, but that uh, call is a uh, frequent call. So you are calling that API multiple times or many times and you are getting the same result from the database. So to avoid this kind of heavy operations or multiple calls to database or any external resource, uh, you can implement caching in your Spring Boot so that you will be able to store that data into cache and you don't need to go each time to the database or external resource and fetch the data. So that is the advantage of caching. Now you should have idea how to implement that caching. So the very first thing is you need to include a Spring Boot starter cache dependency in your com.xml file that will uh, make a cache dependency available for you. Then uh, next thing is you need to enable caching. So to enable caching, uh, you need to use a direct enable caching annotation. Uh, this annotation can be placed at your main class which is uh, the class which contains main method. So you can place this annotation that will enable caching mechanism for your Spring Boot application. Once you configure this enable caching mechanism, you need to configure the cache manager. So this cache manager will take care of the caching infrastructure. So you can create a configuration class which will be responsible for cache and you can create a B or return a B, which will return you a cache manager. So there are different types of cache managers which are available in uh, Spring Boot Starter Cache dependency. So you can choose one of the uh, cache manager and return it as a B that will be used to configure the cache manager. And then the next step is uh, you need to add cacheable annotation on a method which we need to cache. So the and direct cacheable annotation will uh, be placed on the method you want to cache and can include additional parameters to specify the name for your cache and the key by which your cache will be identified. Once you are done with all these steps, you can start your application and hit uh, the API, which is going to call the method which you have written at service layer. So once you hit that API for the first time, you will get the result from the external process or it will go to the database and it will bring the result and put into the cache. And when you hit uh, the next time, the same API, uh, it will not go to the external source or database. It will give you the results from the cache. Okay guys, so that is about the cache. And if you want me to create a video, separate video on this, let me know in the comment section. I will try to create a separate video with all these details to implement testing in Spring Boot. So that was the first question. Now let me discuss the second question. So the second question was related to microservices. So he was asked how the microservices communicate with each other. So there are different ways by which microservices communicate with each other. The first way is uh, synchronous communication by using your HTTP or REST template. So REST template is one of the way by which you can exchange the information. So you can use rest template dot exchange method to exchange 
exchanged the information between the microservices. So these microservices expose HTTP endpoints. Basically, these are the RESTful APIs that the other services can call synchronously. So this approach allows services to exchange the data and request specific actions from each other using our standard HTTP methods like gate, put, post, and delete. The other way is a synchronous communication, or you can call it as a messaging or event-driven communication. So in this approach, microservices communicate asynchronously by sending messages or events to a message broker or an event bus. Okay, and the services can publish events or messages to the broker, and the other services can subscribe to and consume these events. So these are the two ways by which microservices can communicate with each other. There could be any uh, other ways, but you should know at least uh, two ways to uh, by which microservices communicate with each other. So the next question which was asked is, uh, what is auto configuration in Spring Boot? So this auto configuration is a, a term which uh, basically uh, helps Spring application to automatically configure the frame, Spring framework and its components based on the dependencies which are provided in your com.xml file or the configuration configured or present in your application cluster. So it basically helps you to automatically enable the configuration and to make this auto configuration enable, you can use enable auto configuration annotation at your main class. Okay, the class which contains your main method. There, if you mention this a direct enable auto configuration annotation, your Spring application will be enabled for auto configuration or automatic configuration. Then the next question was related to the dev tools dependency or library in your Spring Boot application. So, what is the use of this dev tools library? So, this DevTools library will help you to automatically restart your application whenever you do some code changes. So with this DevTools enabled, any changes you make to your source code or resources or configuration files are automatically detected and it triggers a quick application restart. That means your application will detect these changes automatically uh, when you do some changes and save the file it will detect those changes and automatically restart your application. So this will avoid or eliminate the need to manually stop and then start the application during development. So that will save you your time and it will help you to improve the productivity. So that was a question which was asked in interview related to Spring Boot and DevTools library. And there was a question related to Core Java. So it was one of the simple question. So what is exception in Java or how do you handle exceptions and what are the different types of exceptions? So basically uh, there are two types of exceptions in Java. One is compile time exception and the other is runtime exception. So compile time exceptions are also called as uh, checked exceptions. So these checked exceptions or compile time exceptions are the exceptions which are checked by your compiler at compile time. For example, find not found exception. This is one of the example of compile time exception. Then runtime exceptions are the exceptions which cannot be checked by your compiler. That's why it is called as unchecked exceptions. And these exceptions occurs at a runtime or during execution of your program. For example, null pointer exception or array index out of bound exception. Basically, Array index of the bound exception can occur if you try to access an index which is not available in your array. Okay, so let us consider you have array of five elements and you, if you try to access the element at sixth index, you will get array index of the bound exception and that cannot be checked by your compile. That can be occurred at only at runtime. That's why it is called as runtime exception. So these are the theory questions which were asked into the interview. And apart from this, uh, he was asked to solve two problem segments and he was asked one more question, which was related to, he was asked to guess the output of the uh, given program. So that I'm going to ask you at the end of this video. But before that, let me try to solve the two problem segments which were asked into the interview. So the first problem segment was he was uh, given a list of uh, 
words and he was asked to group the words by their length so basically this list contains a list of words or group names and he was asked to form a output which will be as per the length of that word and he was asked to use a java 8 feature specifically stream api feature to solve this problem so without wasting time let's get started and see how to solve this problem so here you can see i have written a class group words by name and inside that i have written a main method which is going to be starting point for our program execution now what i will do i will declare a list of words so this list is going to be from java.util.list and as this list is going to be of words so i will make it a list of strings and then i'll write it as strings equal to now to construct this list i'm going to use arrays.asList method so here i'm going to use arrays arrays dot as list and i will simply copy the list of these words and paste it here okay so this will return a list of strings and this will be stored inside this strings variable next thing is i need to use a java api to form a group of these words according to their length so here i'm going to use strings dot stream this will give me a stream for the given list of things and then i need to group the result set according to their length so for that i'm going to use collect method and this collect method will accept a parameter which is collector start grouping by so this collector start grouping by is going to provide me a result set according to the grouping by functionality so here i'm going to use collectors from java.util.stream and then grouping by function so this grouping by fun takes a parameter which is a function parameter basically it is a classifier by which we have to group the result set so here i'm going to use string and then length so i have to group the result set by length of the word or length of the string that's why i have specified this classifier as a string dot length and once i get this i will get a, a result set which will be grouped by string length okay and this is going to return a map of integer comma list of string so i need to store the result set which will be returned by this method so here i'm going to store that result set into a map and this map is going to be of type integer comma list of string list of string and here simply i will write it as a map okay now i got the result set so i need to print the result set so here i will use this out and i will simply print it as grouped strings and i will print the value which are there into map so this map is basically going to have key as a integer that means it is going to give me the count and this will be the list of strings okay or this is going to be the length of that word and that list of string is going to be the list of words so here you can see for pr has four characters or the length of that pr is four and that's why it is four then apple and grape are having five characters that's why it is five and then banana has six characters or the length of that word is six that's why it is coming as a six okay so that was the first problem statement which was asked and we solved it by using this approach now next problem statement is uh, let me explain you what was the next problem statement so here he was given a list of words and he was asked to join all the words from this list and combine it into a single string okay so what i will do i'll uh, 
use the same class or maybe I have another class which I will use. So here you can see I have a class join words in a list and inside that I have written a main method which is going to be starting point for our program execution. Now what I will do, I will create a list of words the so same way I'm going to use list from java.util and it is going to be a list of words that means it should have list of string and then again I'm going to use strings is equal to arrays dot as lists and I'm going to use the words which are there into this problem statement so I will copy these words from the problem statement and I will put it here okay so this will give me a list of all these words and this list of words will be stored inside the strings variable now again i need to use stream apis or java features to concatenate all these words or join all these words and form a single string so for that i'm going to convert this strings dot strings into a stream by using strings dot stream function and then again i'm going to collect the result set by using collect method and this collect method takes a parameter which is going to be collector and this collectors dot there is a function which will help me to join all the words so this joining function will join all the words and it will give me a single string and is this is going to give me a result as a single string i will declare a variable and i will store that result into a string type of variable so this is going to be stored into this result uh, variable and then i will simply uh, write sys out to print the result so here concatenated string is and here i'm going to print the value which is there into the result okay now we are done let's run this program and see what will be the output so right click run as java application so here you can see concatenated string is hello what okay so what we did we created a list of words by using arrays dot as list function then we converted that list into a stream by using stream function and then we collected the result by using collect function this collect function accepts the collectors as a parameter and this collectors as a function which is a joining function this will join or concatenate this uh, list of word and form a string and it will return you the result set which will be your concatenated string and simply i printed that result set so these were the two problem segments which were asked into the interview and he solved those problem segments okay and apart from this he was asked one question which was related to the output so he was given this uh code and he was asked to identify what will be the output of this code so here you can see i have written a class test and inside that class there is a main method okay and after that main method inside that main method i have two variables s1 equal to new string of cloud tech s2 string s2 is equal to new string of cloud tech and then we have two statements so first statement is if s1 equal equal to s2 then the output should be s1 equal equal to s2 otherwise it should be s1 is not equal to s2 that is the first output and the second output it should be based on this condition so s1 if s1 dot equals s2 then it should print both strings are equal otherwise it should print both strings are different so to understand uh, what will be the output you guys should have idea about uh, the strings work so if you guys know the answer about this code you can let me know in the comment section and if you guys like this video please don't forget to like subscribe and share this video that will motivate us to create more videos like this okay guys that's it from this video see you in the next thank you bye bye